Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Council in September. Where did the summer go? This is the 28th meeting of the 142nd Council of the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas, and uh, we thank you all for being here tonight. So the first thing we have, uh, disclosures of interest. Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, minutes. Your Worship, I have a motion that the minutes of the meetings held on August the 8th, 2022 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Peters, second by Councillor Clark. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Council will now resolve itself into Committee of the Whole to deal with the following business. First item under the first committee, which is Strategic Direction and Development, is the application for a temporary removal of part lock control. Uh, I would have a motion that report PD 4722 relating to the application by Novi Construction Limited for temporary removal of part lock control for parts one to four on plan 11R10902 be received for information and further that the application relating to the passing of a bylaw to temporarily remove part lock control for those parts on plan 11R10902 be approved and further the council authorized staff to prepare a bylaw pursuant to section 50 sub 7 of the planning act which provides that subsection 50 sub sorry section 50 sub 5 of the planning act relating to part lock control does not apply to parts 1 to 4 on plan 11r 10902 moved by councillor wookie seconded by councillor rimel questions or comments seeing that all those in favor any opposed? That's carried. Next item relates to an assumption bylaw for Orchard Park South Subdivision Phase 3. I have a motion that report ES 5722 relating to Orchard Park South Subdivision Phase 3 assumption bylaw be received for information and further the council direct that a bylaw be prepared for the city to assume Orchard Park South Subdivision Phase 3 uh, 34T16503 from Springwater Developments Incorporated. Moved by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor Baldwin Sands. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Last item on the agenda under the, this committee uh, relates to two applications to the Committee of Adjustment relating to the property at 85 Alexandria Avenue. The first is for a consent to sever uh, leaving lots of 12.1 meters of frontage on each particular lot. Both lots will continue to be used for residential purposes. The second is an application for a minor variance uh, to permit a semi-detached dwelling with a height of 11.5 meters, uh, whereas the maximum permitted under the bylaw is 11, and to permit uncovered steps 1.8 meters high and projecting 1.9 meters into the front yard whereas the bylaw permits uncovered steps to project up to 1.5 meters with a, into a front yard and no higher than 1.25 meters above grade. Unless there are any further items from the members under this committee, Your Worship, we'll now move into community engagement and services. The first item relates to the Jumbo Monument update. I have a motion that report PR 1522 relating to the Jumbo Monument update be received for information. Moved by Councillor Burgess, seconded by Councillor Kohler. Questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Rimel, it's been so long, I almost forgot your name, Joan. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Rimel. I, I, all I had a question was, it says the repairs will be funded by the um, Jumbo Restoration Reserve, and I just wondered how much money's in that reserve. Mr. Treasurer? I was hoping that question wouldn't come up. <laughs> I believe it's, I don't know off the top of my head, it's in the area of 50,000, I believe. Thanks. Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. 
The next item relates to the 2022 Optimist Club Santa Claus Parade. I have a motion that report ES 6022 relating to the parade be received for information and further the council approve the temporary closing of First Avenue from the north side of Talbot Street to the south side of Redan Street from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. The east northbound lane to be available for emergency vehicles and Talbot Street from the east side of First Avenue to the east side of Williams Street from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturday, November the 19th, 2022, and further that access for vehicles be maintained at all times through, throughout the closures, and further that parking be restricted between, between 5 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. on both sides of the roadways along the parade route. Moved by Councillor baldwin Sands, seconded by Councillor Wookie. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Your Worship, unless there are any further items from the members for this committee. Councillor Baldwin Sands and then Councillor Peters and Councillor Rywell. Thank you so very much. In the interim, I've, um, when we haven't been together, I've received a couple of questions about the status of the pickleball courts and the resurfacing. I was hoping that Mr. Bray would be able to provide the public with an update. Um, what's happening with the Pinafore Park pickleball courts, please. Mr. Bray. Thank you, Mayor Preston. Through you to Councillor Baldwin-Sands. Uh, the tender has been released. It closes on September 14th, and we're hopeful, weather permitting, um, it'll at least begin this year. It's temperature sensitive, the material they're putting down. So we want to make sure we have a good job. So it could be finished in the spring once it warms up above 50 degrees. Thank you. Councillor Peters. Oh, thanks, Your Worship. I just wanted to uh, comment on Councillor Rimel uh, regarding the Jumbo Monument. I've just found, I had asked Dan that question about a year, two years ago. And there is $125,000 in the jumbo reserve. And the bulk of the money came from an estate of a lady by the name of Frances McCall. I'd never heard of that, but anyway, so there's adequate funds. Just thought I'd help you out there, Dan. I, I just took a second to look it up. There's around 177,000 in there. All right, Councillor Rimel. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't expect an answer tonight. I just. I just want to bring this up. This is an outstanding thing, and I want to know if it's still outstanding. It was back in April of 2017 that Elgin Chrysler had asked for 25 parking spots at the Timken area, and we had allowed it for a year. And then a year later, they were still there. And then in um, January of 2019, we gave them six more months. And then the pandemic and everything come. Uh, so I'm just not sure, is that still an outstanding issue? Are they still using 25 spots? I just, I just never, wasn't sure if that had gotten wrapped up. Mr. Bray, can you help us with that? Thank you, Mayor Preston, through you to Councillor Rimel. Um, that agreement is informal. I think it's uh, expired, but there's, st we're still honoring it and they're not using more than because I was looking at it uh, last winter and the, uh, they're not using more than I think it's the 25, 20 spots. And we also were in contact with them to let them know if we have a tournament. As you know, sometimes parking is an issue there, so they will remove their trucks. It's something we have to formalize again. Just, just, just to make sure that, you know, like they're not on an ongoing basis, just think that that's their, they have 25 spots all the time yeah. because this has been five years now. Like, you know, they were supposed to look at increasing their space or whatever. But anyway, it's just, you don't want, you know, people taking pieces of city parking and then all of a sudden it's, it becomes mm -hmm. a, a precedent because we've let one group do it. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Herbert. Thank you, Worship. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I think you mentioned in August that the park beside the library was being tendered or something. And I just wonder how that was coming along. Uh, that's out for tender now. And the closing date escapes me. I think it's in two weeks. So will something start this year? Or is that something in the spring? I've uh, it, it's again. Um, I've put in a provision for mo a lot of the concrete. I put in provisions for winter heat and calcium. So we're hopeful that things will start happening this year. That's, That's what's in the contract. Yep, thank you. Spring completion. Thank you. 
Councillor Wookie. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, two things under this committee. Number one, I'd like to thank the uh, Parks Department for their the lighting project on the Wilson Stop Trail. And um, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback about that. And so thank you very much. I thought it's, it's appropriate lighting. And my hope is uh, should council decide in the next capital budget, we can extend that up to Wellington Street. Again, notwithstanding the lighting, the lighting policy, but this is a, a commuter trail that's well used. So that's number one. So thank you very much, Jeff, to you and your team. Secondly, um, what I'd like to find out if I could get a report and this might, I don't know whether this is uh, from the clerk's office. I'd just like to get some information regarding fireworks policies in neighboring communities. And maybe that information is already at hand, but I would just like to know what's going on because again, on the weekend, uh, there were some fireworks going off and, and of course everybody's dog freaks out. And, and, and I just, I would just like to get a handle on what other communities are doing. Um, a, a, a constituent expressed their concerns, and I don't want to be a downer on celebrations, but there, of course, is a collateral cost to pay for everything, and I'd just like to know where we are relative to our, our peers. Thank you. Great, and I recognize that London's doing a large study right now about fireworks, too, so we can include that, that in there, too. And Councillor Wookie, thank you for bringing up the lighting on the trails. That You're, you're right. I've had a number of uh, contacts and calls about just that piece. So, I, and I tell them every time it wouldn't have happened if Steve Wookie hadn't pushed it. So, yeah. further questions or comments, Councillor Herbert? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this would probably be for Justin, I would think. Um, we live at the top of the Fingo Hill, obviously, in the intersection at the down at the main thing has been closed for four or five, almost six days. Is there an arrangement for fire service to come up that hill? How, how would the fire department get to our area in Monroe Street if there was a fire up there? Uh, if there is pre-arrangement for somebody. So I see Dave Gregory's on the call too, but anyway. Anything? Uh, yeah, through your worship to uh, Councilor Herbert. Yeah, so when we have those types of situations, we do reach out to the fire department and if uh, they need to, they can do a uh, uh, share a service kind of a thing where they can, uh, Silver can look after uh, the top of Fingal uh, line, but right now uh, we are trying to at least keep access through the intersection so emergency services can get through if there's ever a, if there's ever an emergency in, on top of uh, Fingal line there. So, is that arranged ahead of time to have yes. cell? Oh, it, we, we've, we've all, thank for, you. For the previous, I had a neighbor ask me, and yeah. I said previous. You know, I'll find uh, out. So, like whenever we do that, we are, we in active conversation with the uh, fire department when we have these types of things. So, so we're well covered. Yes, sir. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Anything else under this committee? Seeing none. We'll now move into infrastructure and civic operations. First item relates to the 2022 capital pro uh, program status update. I have a motion that report ES 5921 relating to the 2022 capital program status update be received for information. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Rymo. Questions or comments? Councillor Baldwin Sands. Thank you. First, I would like to thank and congratulate the staff for this excellent report. There's very little that hasn't been done, and there's very little that is not going to be accomplished underneath the direction that Council has given, and it's gone above and beyond. So, first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you. On the one of the projects that was listed on this plan. It doesn't give the credit to the active transportation ties that fit into our strategic plan and the complete streets. I was hoping that Mr. Lawrence would make a comment on that, please. And then I have a couple of other questions. Thank you. Great. Mr. Lawrence? Thanks. Um, so active transportation uh, through the complete streets program, we look at um, as many sidewalks and bike paths as we can add to existing situations. Uh, so all of the projects we consider upgrading as much as we can. And, and the concept is to make it um, a road corridor usable for all modes of travel. And so it's a really positive social impact that we can create uh, in, in all of these projects every time we see a reconstruction. Thank you. And it fits in nicely with our strategic plan. So I thank you very much for that um, attitude that you've taken with these projects. The next one is on the odor control um, that's been happening. Can we talk a little bit about that? Mr. Lawrence? 
Uh, odor sure. control. Odor control, yes. So as like a general status update, um, Council will recall we combined the odor control project with the plant optimization study. So that's the, that's the, the, the contract where we're trying to get more sewage through the plant at peak times by removing bottlenecks. So we combined two batches, two projects and two batches of funding into one. It's, um, it's nearing the end of its detailed design now. Uh, we're likely to tender and, and start over the winter. So it is a type of construction that would, it would in theory could go all year long. So it's, it's, it's coming along nicely, but there's, you know, there'll still be um, tendering and then um, about a year of construction. Thank you. And my last question is in the last paragraph, it talks about the underground pipe networks and how is that going to help save or reduce waste or save money in the long run? Sure. Yeah, so um, replacing pipes um, has a number of benefits. Um, the, the nicest one being it gets better water quality. Uh, there's, there's, of course, a better fire protection uh, when we replace water mains. And in terms of uh, leakage, there's less leakage. So by having less water leak, uh, it, it saves all the users uh, money. Um, so lining and replacing sanitary storm and water main have multiple points of, of return on investment. Okay. Further questions on this report? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? It's carried. Your Worship, unless there are any further items from the members under infrastructure, I will now move into corporate governance and administration. First item relates to the 2021 de development charges. I have motion that uh, report TR 1222 relating to 2021 development charges be received for information. Moved by Councillor Burgess, seconded by Councillor Rymel. Questions or comments on the development charges? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next item relates to the 2021 Council remuner Remuneration Report. I have a motion that report TR 1321 relating to the 2021 Council Remuneration be received for information. Moved by Councillor Peters, seconded by Councillor Burgess. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Next report relates to the 2021 annual report for building permit fees. I have a motion that reports TR 1422 relating to, to the 2021 annual report for building permit fees be received for information. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Burgess. Questions or comments? Seeing that, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, Your Worship, next item is a 2022 municipal election update from myself. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention that uh, for any municipal electors that your name must be on the voters list in order to vote please check the city's website, www.stthomas.ca to see whether you are on the list. Uh, if you are not, then you will need to print out a form or you can pick one up in the clerk's department to add your name to the voters list. And uh, then come election day, uh, or sorry, not come election day, but towards the end of September, uh, you will receive a voter information letter and it'll explain how to vote. It'll, it'll provide you with a pin so that you can access both the voting website and the telephone voting site. Uh, if I could just mention that in order to make sure that our voters list is as up-to-date as possible, the clerk's department has sent out, sent out mailers as well as letters to residents of high density buildings, um, in a number of complexes, as well as uh, some of the city owned housing, providing general information about the municipal election. Uh, eligible electors can vote anytime during the voting period, which is October the 11th at 10 a.m. to October the 24th at 8 p.m. Uh, anyone who does not have a telephone or access to the internet and needs assistance can come to one of the mobile voter help centers 
at various locations in the city and can vote using an iPad locate, located within one of these centers. It, it's a mix of daytime, weekend, and evening hours. There's five locations, uh, Algon Center, Locks School, Senior Center, and the library. The library will be open from 10 till eight on voting day. Uh, at the other locations, uh, there will be limited hours. So for example, at Elgin Center on both Saturday, October the 15th and the 22nd, voting will take place from 12 till four. At the Senior Center, it will be open from 12 till four. And at the Lock School, it'll be open from four till eight. All this information is available on the city's website and will be advertised in the St. Thomas Times Journal later this week. And of course, anyone wishing to uh, ask any further questions can uh, contact customer service or the clerk's department at customer service at stthomas.ca or the city hall number 631-1680, extension zero. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, if I could, if I could add on each of the uh, the special places where we have people that can come and use our equipment to vote, they will still need to bring their their uh, voter identification that they've received um, to their address. Thank you, Worship. They will need to bring their voter identification as well as the voter information letter that they would have received through the mail, as they will be needing that pin to sign in onto the iPad. For those individuals that are still not on the voters list when they attend at one of these mobile help centers, we will have uh, both a laptop and a printer so that we can access our um, voters list, add people to the list, and then print them off a voter information letter on site. Perfect, Councillor Herbert and then Councillor Clark. Thank you, Worship. This is just a question and I've had asked, how do I know I'm on the voters list or how do I get on it? If I bought a new house and I've lived there for three years and I pay taxes, and I, am I automatically on the voters list or do I have to apply to get on the voters list? Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Herbert. Uh, there is no automatic MPAC, the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation does the best that it can to ensure that we have uh, as much information on the voters list as is possible. Um, and of course, we try and make sure that there, if there's any discrepancies, if there are any new street names, we've already gone into adding any new street names for new subdivisions, uh, any apartment buildings. Uh, so all people need to do at this stage is either call and we will check, or if they want to look on the city's website, there's a very small box. You put in your name, your date of birth, and your address. And the question will go to our uh, voters list, basically, electronically, am I on the voters list? If the answer is yes, then that's terrific. If the answer is no, then there is an application form they can print off right off the website, or they can come in and fill it out. Thank you. That's a great piece of information to get out there. Thank you. Councilor Clark. Uh, thank you, Worship. Through you to the clerk. Some people were asking whether or not there would be staff uh, there to assist them. Madam Clerk. Thank you. I neglected to say so. Yes, there will be two staff at each of the voting places. Uh, perhaps at the library, we may add a third staff member towards the end of the day. There will be two staff and there will be uh, two iPads available. Okay. Further questions, Councillor Baldwin says that I see you. No, okay. My peripheral, I just don't, I don't know if it was up or not. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, any other questions for the clerk? Thank you for sharing that. Let's all of us be sharing that also with, um, with the, the electorate. Next topic. Are you worship, unless there are any further items from the members for this committee? Councillor Wacky. Thank you very much, your worship. You know, over the summer, we didn't meet much. So we have lots of time to think about things. And uh, in my mind, it's a very busy place. And um, what I've been reflecting on is that I, this is, I want to, this is really to staff. Uh, this is not to us to say, when we're looking at say subdivision plans and the developer says, this is what they would like. 
I would like us to have a, an equal voice to express what we like. What I mean by that is in the new settlement area, and you're gonna hear me talk, you've heard me talk about this, so I'll talk about it some more. Um, in, any, in any planned area where there are natural heritage features abutting it, what I want to make sure is that we plan so that there should Kettle Creek ever be okay with it or should things change or other our connections with other municipalities close by that we can have a system for people to have trails and active and all that kind of stuff. What I'm trying to say, I'm hoping this, I want to express this to the planning staff, the environmental services staff and parks, rec and property to say, you know, we, we support you. We want you to be brave. And if you've got a vision for something like, hopefully, like, I think if I feel the um, vibe of council, we would support you that for healthy, active social living, even though it might be a little bit outside the box or it might not be what has been done in the past, because I really want us to be able to protect access to natural heritage features. And we have an opportunity now as we're going forward with the new settlement areas. So that is just more to staff than anybody else to say, uh, I'm confident we would support you for you to express your vision of urban planning in St. Thomas. That's all, thank you. Further comments? Seeing none. Your Worship, if there's no further items, Council will now reconvene into regular session. I have a motion that the recommendations, directions, and actions of Council and Committee of the Whole, as recorded in the minutes of this date, be confirmed, ratified, and adopted. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Clark. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. We'll now move into reports of committees. Uh, the only committee report this evening relates to art, trees, and trails project. I have a motion that report STPAC 0222 relating to the art trees and trails project be received for information and further the council approve the acquisition and installation of several art trees and trails displays throughout St. Thomas as set out in report STPAC 0222 and further that the art trees and trails pieces be included as part of the city's public art inventory. Moved by Councilor Rimel, seconded by Councilor Baldwin Sands. Questions or comments? Councillor Baldwin Sands. Thank you. I read this report with great interest and I was hoping that we could get some highlights from the acting chair. Councillor Wookie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Baldwin Sands. I, I love this, pro aside from the fact that I'm on the committee, I love this project because it's bringing art to the people and it's the intersection of like art and nature. If you've been out to Springwater Conservation Area, they have some of them out there. And what's happening here is, um, these are placed, they're not permanent. So anybody's listening, what happens, the state goes 48 inches in the ground. It can be changed uh, it, when we need to. And it's, uh, it's fully funded and it's uh, graffiti resistant and any kind of the repair, any repair costs are included in the budget and will not come out of the city budget. And I'm very excited about this because I love running into art. For instance, I was riding my bike. Uh, I saw, I saw the, the city manager one day, I was on the elevated park and went beyond that. And Beyond that, there's just you're riding your bike along and there's a, a piece of art there with an explanation. And I think it's a wonderful way to get the general public who might not step in an art gallery to see art and say, I'm gonna stop and read that and see what that's all about. So that's what this project is about. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see more of it around the city. Thank you. Thank you, not a question, just a comment. And as chair of Catfish Creek Conservation Authority, where Springwater is, I would like to thank you for that because we receive a lot of very nice compliments about the artwork displayed around the entire Springwater Conservation Area. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, looking forward to these, the, the Kettle Creek Conservation Authority has also utilized the same funds and there's some beautiful Clark McDougall images out there as a result of it. But uh, speaking of seeing art, I was just wondering if you could, um, uh, it's not really related to this report, but explain to me the mirrors that have been installed um, beside the old Royal Bank in the alleyway. Do you know anything about that one? I can comfortably say I know nothing. Okay, I say thank, that with you. A thank face. you, Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> Um, I, I understand it was part of a mural would... project, but it has a reflective 
piece to it. The mirrors were put there to. Well, to I do just that. I, I, I've heard anecdotally that one of the mirrors may be broken, and I'm just concerned that. Um, uh, I'm hoping that it was special glass that yeah, was used. That's my guess. Uh, City manager, do you have the answer on the mirror I, glass? I, I do not. <laughs> I'll say it differently, okay. but we will find out and get back to council. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I noticed uh, some of the names I recognize as local artists for this this round of art. Are they all local artists, or how were the how were the artists chosen? Councillor Wookie, I'm going to keep referring to you on this. Thank you very much. Um, this was that is a um, decision made by the folks at the center. So that's uh, Laura knows way more. Laura Warmpy knows way more about it, and I think that it, her and Sherry, I think, would go through it. We didn't review the actual pieces. We leave it up to the, um, the art community to make that decision. Thank you. Councillor Kohler. Thanks, Your Worship. I just want to add to this. Uh, I think things like this are great, not only just for the people that live in St. Thomas, but when you look at the roundabout statues, the, the art gallery or the art that we're putting on the murals and, and all of that, what's happening, and it's hard to measure but the, the tourism aspect to it and what it's doing for the local economy, it, it's, it's great. And I think the more that we can do things like this will help benefit us, the city in a whole. Further questions under this committee or on this report? Seeing none. Your Worship, we now move into petitions and communications. There are two this evening. Uh, the first one is a copy of a resolution addressed to the Minister of Health and Deputy Premier, and that's been received from the town of Elmer regarding funding for the development of warming and cooling center responses. And the second one is uh, notice that application has been made to the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario from Halibut House Fish and Chips for a liquor license for its indoor and outdoor areas at 1025 Talbot Street. Council may make representation to the commission concerning the application. Uh, Your Worship, unless there are any uh, further items from the members, we can now move into unfinished business. Nothing on the agenda at this time, unless there are any items from the members. Your Worship, seeing none, we'll now move into new business for council. Uh, the, I have a, I have one reminding that the uh, September 11th overnight, the morning hours of about 4.45 till 7, there's a power outage in our community, almost citywide. It's not quite, but also taking in er areas around us. This was the um, uh, uh, both Integris and Ontario Hydro, an upgrade piece, and it means uh, uh, some people are going to be waking up late for church on Sunday if their alarm has been set on their electronic clock, um, but it is a uh, early morning hours of September 11th. Uh, and we're trying to remind as many people as possible that that's the case, um, and it's happening hopefully while most people sleep, and so it won't really affect uh, refrigerators and 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 the like. Some of our we've uh, our police, our hospital, our industries have all been informed and all are aware of what time and and how it will happen, uh, but we wanted to make sure that the people at home also knew. Anything else under new business? Seeing nothing. We'll now move into bylaws. I have a motion that leave be granted to bring in the bylaws. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Rymel. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. I have a motion by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Rymel, that the bylaws be now read a first time, referred to Council and Committee of the Whole, and read a second time. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. First bylaw, please. First bylaw is a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting held on the sixth day of September 2022. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Second bylaw, please. Second bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 45 89, being a bylaw to revise and consolidate certain bylaws regarding traffic and parking of motor vehicles. This relates to community safety zones uh, at Peachtree Boulevard and Raven Avenue. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Third and final bylaw, please. 
Third bylaw is a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute and affix the seal of the corporation to a certain agreement between the city and Patriot Properties, Inc. This relates to a land use agreement uh, adjacent to the LNPS trail. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, it's carried. Worship, I, I rise and report successful passing of three bylaws. Great. I have motion by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Rymel that Sorry, I've got the wrong one there. I'll go off script here. Uh, the report of uh, council and committee, the whole on the three bylaws be uh, confirmed, ratified, and adopted. Great. Questions or comments? Seeing that, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Your Worship, no public notices or notices of motion for this evening. There is a need. Uh, to move into closed session. At this time, I have a motion that this meeting be closed to deal with a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land, commercial or financial information supplied in confidence to the municipality, which if disclosed could reasonably be expected to prejudice significantly the competitive position or interfere significantly with the contractual or other negotiations of a person, group of persons or organization and a personal matter about identifiable individuals. Moved by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor Baldwin-Sands. Before we vote, Councillor Kohler, did you have something? Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I'm just wondering if I, we could add an item to the closed session, and if, if not, uh, if the notice isn't enough, maybe for the next uh, closed session regarding the discussion around our service request delivery and response. And it, I think it should be enclosed because uh, the discussion could identify some individuals. Okay. Well, let's try it in closed and see if we can get it. If not, we will uh, put it onto a future agenda. So on the closed session, moving into closed session, reminding the people at home, we'll be going into closed session now and the uh, council meeting will end. Uh, when we're done with the closed session, we'll simply come out of closed long enough to adjourn this meeting for today. And we'll see you all next week. So all those in favor, any opposed, it's carried, thank you.